Hey guys, this is going to be probably the last video on the garden. Um, if you've seen the other videos, you've know, you would know that I've done the Ruth Stout method. Um, I may make another one when I finally pull up the potatoes, see how they did. But um, for now, I'm kind of thinking this may be the last or the second to the last video. And spaghetti squash has been doing incredibly well. They're everywhere. I've picked so far, I think 17 of them. And I'm gonna include a couple of photos that I've taken um, of things that I've collected so far. And it's not everything that I've harvested, but it's um, a portion of it anyway. And these, spaghetti squash by far have done the best they are starting to get a little mold on the leaves now so it's probably at the end of the road for them and this is way on the other side of the garden so we'll go up here <clears throat> you can see they're everywhere and thankfully, we like spaghetti squash. We make the spaghetti bowls out of them. And we've eaten quite a few so far. And the ones that aren't quite ripe, we put out on the deck in the sun. And I think there's a picture of that that I'm going to include in this video. And you can see everything is starting to fall back. And it kind of sucks. But I guess, hey, nothing lasts forever, right? <clears throat> Today is September 3rd. My watermelon kind of bummed me out. There's two of them in here, and this is the biggest one. And I, I must have planted them, I don't know, not where I wanted to because this isn't where I planted them. So I'm not quite sure how this even happened, but the spaghetti squash just seems to be, it's, it's incredible. I don't even know how to explain it. And again, this is the Ruth Stout method in... Um, early very early spring probably wasn't even spring yet I rolled out two four by five round bales and they sat for a few months and that's what I planted in um, I mean as far as the weeds go there's no room for weeds I haven't weeded, I've watered it, and I'm not kidding, three times this year. Only because we had a couple of stretches of some pretty dry spells. But if it wasn't for this darn mold, I think it would be a lot better over here anyway. And obviously the dandelions I don't care what you do, they're going to grow through it. But uh, these are good for salads. These are totally edible. Every part of it, flowers, stem, leaves, even the roots. I may do a video on the root, as you can make a coffee or a tea out of the root. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video. But um, you can see this stuff here is getting moldy. This isn't the white leaf syndrome thing this is actually mold and it's depressing which means it's going to be around next year unless I figure out how to get rid of it but I don't want to use any chemicals I've not used any fertilizer anything like that in this garden butternut squash I really like those but that's the only one I've got and I think it's because of this mold I think the mold got to it before it had a chance to really do its thing I mean, some of these leaves are like 
elephant ears. They're enormous. And yesterday I came through here and I harvested what was ready to go. But this crook neck squash, apparently I planted the wrong thing. Because I'm not a fan of this crook neck squash. And I hate to use the word unfortunately, but this stuff has grown like a weed. I've got it everywhere. The cucumbers have really fallen back. But the tomatoes are just ridiculous. And it rained yesterday, so these guys have been sucking up some water and they're starting to split because of that. Now I've been having a bug issue with my finger eggplants, but again I refuse to use a pesticide on it. So it is what it is. And like this one made it to a pretty decent size. And uh, no bug damage. And I've gotten quite a few of those without any issues. So it is what it is. Um, my jalapenos are just starting to pop. These I grew from seeds and they got in here real late. So I don't know how well they're going to do. Tomatoes, like I said, they're just, they're, they're growing ridiculous. I can't tell you how many tomatoes I've already picked out of here. And the pumpkins, the pumpkins are doing good. A um, little disappointed with the bell peppers. They were kind of small this year, but again, this, this hay really didn't have a lot of time to um, to degrade, to rot, whatever word you'd like to use. So, banana peppers, man, I picked a boatload of these this year. So quite honestly, for the effort I put into this, I have no complaints. And I'm really excited to start pulling up these potatoes. These are all potatoes. There's two or three different varieties. And I, I honestly don't even remember what I planted because it was months ago. So I probably will do another video. And up until a couple of weeks ago, there were a million flowers on these. So I'm really hoping for a half decent harvest anyway. Like I said, the cucumbers, they've all fallen back. There's really no flowers left on them. We've had a couple of nights. Well, the other morning I got up and it was 42 degrees out. So, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But we're going to let them go until first frost anyway. And I had no idea it was going to go wild like this, so there's no room to walk around. Everything is interfering with everything else. Another pumpkin. I think there's actually five or six pumpkins in here. But this mold is like just super depressing. Now there's a whole pile of red tomatoes in there that I missed. And again, it's because everything is so overgrown and just crazy that it's, it's really hard to see what's going on. And I'll be honest with you, I've grown corn. I usually put in 12 to 20 plants. And they always come out like the baby corns in Chinese food. This year, they're not huge. But I've got a lot of corn. Even on this little tiny plant, I mean, that ear is probably half the size of a store-bought ear. But again, it's, um, it's better than I've done in the past. Zucchinis, I got one yesterday. And unfortunately, I did not take a picture of it. And I think the wife is working on a zucchini lasagna. 
but it had to weigh six pounds, just one. There's another good sized pumpkin in there. And this is a pretty small area. It's probably like a 20 by 40 at the most, but it's definitely got something to do with this Ruth Stout method. The retention of moisture, the breakdown. I know that I've dug up some of this just kind of like to check things out and I can't believe the the worms and the insects and stuff that are living inside of this rotting hay it's it's actually quite impressive and I will definitely be doing this again next year but I'm going to do it a little bit smarter so there's another ear of corn there. I've got a lot of corn. This one here is kind of freakish. It's, it's pretty little. But um, I just wanted to do a quick video and show everybody what this Ruth Stout method can do. And like I said, I've never... <laughs> And I don't know why, because I live in an area where corn is grown quite heavily. And I was always a little jealous of how well everybody else can grow corn. So maybe this is what they're doing. I've never really looked at the ground that the corn was coming out of. But this year, I mean, this plant here is probably seven or eight feet tall. I've never had a plant that tall before. And you know, I've tilled and I've planted and I've fertilized and all that stuff. But this year, because we came back from Arizona and I had so many other things I needed to do, I really thought, you know, I, I want to garden every year. Hit or miss. Um, I, I put the only effort into this as far as I usually do is I rolled out those round bales on top of the existing ground. There was no tilling, no fertilizing. I didn't do any crazy work. And I just planted in that, you know, a few months after it was down. And I'm ridiculously happy with, with the results. So like I said, I'll definitely be laying down a couple of more round bales prior to this winter. And hopefully next year will be as good, if not better. But um, a couple of pictures to follow as to what I've already picked. And again, by no means, it's not everything I picked. It's only when I thought about it and actually took a picture of it. So you guys enjoy your day and hope you had a good uh, Labor Day. And we'll talk soon. Take care now. Thanks.